Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we are talking about that breed doesn't matter and knowing the proper name of the gate doesn't matter. This is not a rant video, but it might as well be because it is definitely a pet peeve. So many people wanna talk about gates like they're special or only their breed can do it. And that is simply not true nor does breed matter with how you train. So I work with all kinds of horses. I work with McCurdy Plantation horses, Spotted Saddle horses, Tennessee Walkers, Missouri Foxtrotters, Rockies, Pasifinos, Peruvian Passos, uh, Icelandics, Kentucky Mountain horses, and I ride them all the same. I train them all the same. And not, but the one thing that I do wanna note is I don't show. So I am not stuck trying to make horses look a certain way to win. Though the training I do will help show horses, but it is not my main focus. So I want to show you today that breed doesn't matter and the name of the gate doesn't matter. And it may or may not convince you and that's okay. Uh, this video is a little bit late because I was hurried about getting these together so my slides are not that professional. Okay, so what I do want to say is I looked at this book, and you can also look at Lee Ziegler's book, Easy Gated, Easy, what is it? Oh, Easy Gated Horses. And she has a lot of the same images, but these ones were a little bit bigger, and I wanted to show you these and compare. So my focus here is not on the breed, but rather on the footfalls, okay? The footfalls in the different gates and how they're basically the same or very similar and the biggest difference is speed and moment of suspension rather than what breed they are or what name they call it and uh, at some point I would love to have video footage and I have video footage of a lot of these horses but I just wanted to, this was easier for me to put together today uh, and hopefully this year I'll be able to get footage of all these horses uh, in slow motion and show you how the footfalls are the same. Now, one question I get asked a lot is, you know, which footfall, which foot starts the gate? Well, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it, it depends which foot you watch. That's the one that starts the gate. Most people watch the back leg, but that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at this first slide. So this is the horse on the left. This is a walk. Okay, it is a four bead gate and it should be evenly timed. You know, we talked about a pacey walk or a camel walk last week, but this horse is doing a square gate. And if you are watching, you can see that the two legs, the horse on the left, the they they make almost a V with the bat on the side closest to you. So blue and green, they they're kind of pointing toward each other. If a horse was pacing, for example, the legs would be pointed in the same direction, not pointed at each other on the same side. So let's take a look on the horse on the right. Now, unfortunately, the color probably gives away what breed it is, but this horse is doing a saddle rack or what the Rocky Mountains call their gait. And if you look, the footfall is basically the exact same. The two right, left legs are on the ground supporting and the two right legs are in the air in the same footfall pattern as the walk. <clears throat> so it is it should be an even four beat gait, same footfall pattern as the walk. If we were to start counting by the next footfall, it would be back right, front right, back left, front left, and that would repeat. Now, if we were watching the, the back left leg land, then we would start with the back left, front left, back right, front right. So some of this is a little bit technical, and if you have questions, please comment below, but I know some people prefer some of the technical posts where we're talking about why these are different or not different. So again, the left horse is walking, the right horse is gating, doing a saddle rack or a saddle gate, and they are the same footfall. So this next one we're gonna do is, um, so on the right, again, you have that saddle gate, <clears throat> and on the left, uh, you have, do you see those feet? Is anybody else looking at that fit, that foot? Anybody want to guess? Uh, let's open it up. I'll give you a couple minutes to guess. The horse on the left, the chestnut horse or Palomino, I'm not sure what color it's supposed to be. Do you know what breed that is? And be honest, what gait does it look like he's doing? 
If you said it looks like he's doing whatever the Rocky on the right is doing, you would be correct. So feel free. I'm going to open it up. Anybody can guess. Remember, these are images from this book, Susan Harris. Uh, Susan E. Harris, Horse, Horse Gates, Balance, and Movement, which I haven't read the whole thing, but so far I love everything in this book, and I will be reading the entire thing. Uh, Abigail says, hi. Lynn uh, says, hello from Misty, from rainy, misty, gray, Tennessee. Well, today in Texas, there's probably a lot of accidents because we have freezing rain. Lynn said, is it a Paso? Good guess. Uh, <laughs> It is a Pasifino. So we'll go back to this picture here. The horse on the left is a Pasifino doing the Fino gate, which if you look at the footfalls and uh, I took, so these, she has the whole series in uh, her, let me just show you, in her book. Um, she has a whole series of movements. I picked the fourth, let me show you guys. I picked the fourth uh, so that would be this one right here. For every one of these pictures, I picked the same, the fourth footfall, the fourth frame, basically her fourth shot to show you. So this is the same for everyone. I didn't pick the ones that looked like it. Uh, this is indeed on the left, a Pasifino. On the right is a Rocky. And they are doing the exact same gait. Now, what we're most likely going to find is because the Paso has his head and neck so high and has his back hollow, which you can actually see a difference in their backs. Because it's hollow, he's taking shorter steps and they're bred smaller and, you know, finer boned. They're not supposed to be the same size as a Rocky necessarily. And so they tend to move their feet faster. But the footfalls are the same. Okay. And again, if we were to show you in a video and slow it down, you would see this. But I wanted to show you like the footfalls are the same. And because of this, between the Paso and the Rocky, or any breed, I'm just using them because those are what I have photos of, it's the same. And because I want all of the horses I work with, generally, now some of them can maybe do a running walk and we train that, or a fox trot and we train that, but all the other horses that I'm working with, I'm training to do an even four beat saddle rack or saddle gait. No matter what breed it is, because again, I'm not training for the show ring. I'm not training to win ribbons. I'm training for the smoothest of gait and the horse's ability to support themselves long term and not break down. Uh, so we've got a couple comments. Uh, Abigail says hello from Alabama. And it's beautiful. Jody says hi. <coughs> Sue says hi. And this person says I've owned Pasifinos for years. I currently own Pasifino Standard Bread Cross. Now well, that sounds like a fun cross. Uh, so yes, so this last one is going to be the Tolt and the Rack. Now, the biggest difference between the Tolt and Saddle Rack or the Rack and Saddle Rack is the moment of suspension. As you can see, I didn't pick and choose. This is a fourth footfall for each horse in her book, right? According to her book. And you can see they there, the footfalls and the reach and the timing is the exact same. The Rack is the same as the Tolt. It is the exact same. It uh, The tolt is the same as a saddle rack, but depending on the speed, it, the faster the horse goes, at some point they have a moment of suspension and a moment where all and three feet are off the ground. Same thing with the fast rack. But the rack is the same as the saddle rack, just it has that moment of suspension, that bigger movement, and that comes with speed. It, the footfall pattern is the same. Let's take a look and count again. Let's get technical. So let's look at the Icelandic. If we were to look at which foot's going to land next, we would say back right, front right, back left, front left. Okay, let's look at the tolt, or the, the rack on the right. So the racking horse on the right. So we're about to watch the front or the back right land, then the front right, then the back left, then the front left. That is so it's the exact same footfall pattern. Okay, just it's uh, the rack and the tolt are faster. However, the tolt can be trained at slower speeds so that it looks just like the Rocky Mountain on the right. And remember, the Rocky Mountain gate or the, the whatever you want to call the saddle gate is the same as the walk, which is the horse on the left. Uh, if anybody is jumping in here in the middle, then you can um, go back and watch the beginning as soon as the live video is done. Eleanor says, you've helped me so much with my horse that pace to get him to get a four bait gate. Thank you. She's from Arizona. You are so welcome. I love hearing positive reviews because mostly, especially lately with the number of videos I post, I have so many people cr critiquing and disagreeing with me. Um, now, this wasn't a disagreement, but... Uh, 
somebody recently commented and, and they were explaining the difference between the, the running walk and the foxtrot. And they described the foxtrot as the horse tipping his back up and forward so that he can walk on his front legs and trot on his back. That is not what happens. I, I'm willing to admit it could be what it looks like, but the horse is actually trotting. He's not doing some weird walk on the front, trot on the back. That's just the way they used to describe it. And so many people have taken that as gospel and I hate it. And I talked about it in my fox trotting video and people, the fox trotters hated that video. So again, if you have a Tennessee walking horse, as an example, uh, I generally train them to do the saddle rack or the saddle gate, which is what we're talking about here. And, but if your horse has a natural proclivity or ability to do the flat walk and running walk, train it. That's totally fine. I get jumped on by Tennessee walking horse people because they want me to promote the flat walk and running walk. Well, I'm going to give you my personal opinion. The flat walk and the running walk, I do not feel are very comfortable because they have so much movement forward and back. And so it's not my preferred gait. Now, if you have walkers and they do the flat walk and running walk and you prefer it, that's fine. I'm not telling you you're doing it wrong, but stop telling me that I'm doing it wrong. Cal says, the Icelander, when I tried to tell him that a Tennessee walking horse's rack was the same as the Tolt, he lost his mind. I was riding it though, and I knew, Cal, good for you. And yes, they will lose their minds. Anybody that's focused on breed-specific gates and their livelihood is kind of in, in those gates. <laughs> uh, they will freak out if you tell them that I Tennessee walkers can foxtrot. Kentucky Mountains can foxtrot, Rocky Mountains can foxtrot, uh, foxtrotters can do a flat walk, and the uh, Tennessee Walkers can do the rack. All of them can do the saddle rack. All of them tend to do it more naturally than the other gates, just depending on how they're bred and trained. And I, and if we go back to one of the questions I was getting a lot this week was had I worked with Peruvian Passos and I wor had I worked with Pasifinos and had I worked with Icelandics and how did I train them? I train them the same way I train a Tennessee walking horse or a Rocky Mountain or Missouri Fox Trotter or a Spotted Saddle Horse, which I get more of. I work on softness and relaxation, which means softness and head down. And then, but whether they're trotty or pacey, I then work with them to get a gait. When they get a good gait, I stop and praise. That is the same, no matter if you have an Indiana Cracker horse, if you bring me a Wakalusa, which I have not had the pleasure of training. I've seen them. They tend to be pacey. And so you work with them the same way you would work with any pacey horse. I work, uh, if you wanted to bring me, a uh, any of the Middle Eastern gated horse breeds, uh, I would I would train them to gate the same way that I train a walking horse or a Rocky or a spotted saddle horse or an Icelandic. We would work on relaxation first and and then whenever we get a little bit of gait, we stop and praise. That is the way I train. I don't use gimmicks. I don't put shoes on. I don't look for specific angles on the feet other than for it to be correct. Saddle fit is important. Bit is important, but bit doesn't make gait. I don't use anything to pull their head in or their nose in or their head down. And I don't put weights or heavy shoes on the feet to get gait. All of that is done through training. Uh, Abigail says she's always wanted to ride an Icelandic. They are fun. Again, the ones I usually come to my clinic need work gating because they don't consistently gate. Sue says, I want to teach her all of them. Uh, Willow is a Tennessee walking horse. And Chandra says, definitely not the most comfortable to ride. Probably talking about the flat walk and running walk. Uh, Abigail says, preach. Yes. Uh, that's, that's my, like I said, it's not a rant, but it is definitely a pet peeve. And like I said, breeders or breed specific people usually hate this video that I do. And I've done it before because I show you. So let's look at it again, just for anybody that's watching and jumped on later. This is the walk. The horse on the left is walking. The horse on the right is doing a saddle rack. Look at the footfalls. They're almost identical. Okay. Now this is a Pasifino and a Rocky. And again, same footfall in fourth footfall in the timing. Their gait looks identical except for where the head is. And you can see on the horse on the left, the Pasifino is hollowing his back more than the Rocky, which is bad though. I've had people recently argue and say that they've done, they've ridden their horse high head like this for 30 years and the horse is fine. That can happen, but I'm not an advocate of the high head. Here's the tolt and the rack. It is the exact same footfall and it is the same as a saddle rack, except that there is the moment of suspension because you have more energy and speed. Okay, there you go. Whether or not I proved my point, that is what I believe. And I am willing 
to have dialogue, discourse, if people are willing to be reasonable and talk about it and not just say I'm wrong just for the sake of saying that I say something different than they do and I don't preach breed specific gating. I want people to have a horse that's relaxed, that's comfortable to ride, uh, and that doesn't that that they have a good relationship with, and then a horse that is using their body well, so that they don't break down early. That is what I am focused on as a trainer more than anything else. And we have Abigail says I enjoyed auditing your clinic in Alabama last year. Well, thank you so much for coming to Alabama or coming to the clinic in Alabama, Al Abigail. Uh, if there are, are there any other questions before. I end this live video. I just want to make it clear because so many people have been messaging me about breed and so I wanted to show you some some photo examples from a book and again this is from this book here Horse Gates Balance and Movement and it's very good and she goes in detail. You can also look at the same photos if you have Lee Ziegler's book Easy Gated Horses because it's going to show the exact same thing. Uh, Robert says, how about breed specific headset? That's a great question. Uh, it goes back to the fact that I don't show. And so I don't think headset has anything to do with gait or balance. And so, yes, they argue all the time that Pasifinos, Icelandics, Rack, Peruvian Passos, walking horses, saddle bred, they're like, they're bred to have their head high. And I argue that that is bad for any horse, whether it's an Arabian, a quarter horse, a gated horse, they hollow their back which means they're not using their muscles and their uh, <laughs> their body to support the weight of the rider. It doesn't matter so much if they move that way in the pasture. It matters especially if they do that with a rider on their back and it's very bad for them. So breed specific headsets, I don't believe in uh, unless you're showing and then they kind of require a certain look. But if you're not showing, you want a relaxed horse. Sandra says, I really love your training. Uh, these walking horse people are for sure different type of people. They love to abuse their horses. Well, some of them do. Not all of them, but there are some out there for sure. And they will argue. And again, honestly, I try not to argue with them because I know we're going to disagree. And they, most of those people show and make money off of having horses that win in showing. And so they're never going to agree with, with my way of thinking. But the more new people I reach, the more people that are just getting into getting into horses and, and are just learning, the more we can change their mind about what correct is. So the best thing you can do is if you could share my videos, share them to your friends, share them to a group so that more people can see them. That's actually the thing that makes the most difference and how we get new people and how we are going to change the gated horse industry. Um, let's see. Lynn says, I felt right away about my, that my Rocky and Paso were very similar in footfalls. Thanks for the picture. Robert says, I know to work on relaxation, but how do I know it's low enough without overbending? Okay, so low enough it does depend a little bit on the horse. If your horse is pacey, initial work should be very low, like to the knees. But once your horse is gating, somewhere about level or a little bit above level is going to be normal for horses, and that's going to depend on each breed. And so, but let's say your horse sees something and is startled. I would immediately ask for head down low. But if I was gating on the trail, it could be level or it could be up a little bit as long as the horse is not throwing his head up. Hopefully that answers the question. Jessica says, very new here. I think I know the answer to this. I have a standard bread that is a pacer. Do we still want to teach him not to pace? Sorry, late to the game, still catching this video now. So if you talked about it and I missed it. Well, you, it'll be helpful for you, Jessica, to go back and watch. But you're correct that I don't like the pace because the pace is inherently a stiff gait. Horses' backs don't have to move because they just kind of drag their feet along. And so I don't... It, if you do, it's not the end of the world. But I highly recommend training a horse out of the pace or at least training head down while they're pacing. Sandra says, where in Alabama do you come? Do you come close to Pensacola, Florida? Well, uh, Alabama, I was there last year and the year before, but I'm not this year. Um, I will be in Geneva, Florida. I think Geneva. It's a little bit north of Orlando uh, in about two weeks, Sandra. So um, I'll be in Florida soon. Lynn says, 
I have a Rocky and a Tennessee walking horse. Love to ride them both. They are the same but different. Yes. Good way to put it. The same but different. Amber says, I have an issue with both my mares pacing. I shared a video in the gated horse group and they criticized me so bad for letting my horse pace, but I learned so much from your horsemanship. So I don't believe in letting a horse pace except when working on head down. And that should be very temporary when you're training head down at the pace. That's the only time I answer, uh, the only time I let a horse pace is while I'm working on head down. Uh, or if the horse is green, let's say the first 30 to 90 days of starting a horse under saddle, if they pace, I don't mind. I work on softness and forward and turning and suppleness and all of that. So uh, I wouldn't let your horse pace either. I certainly wouldn't jump all over you for it. Unfortunately, there's groups that are like that. Uh, Vivian says, do you come to Phoenix, Arizona? Vivian, I have had so many requests to come to Arizona this year. Nothing has been set up, no clinics. Uh, and my 2022 schedule is booked. So I am looking for people to schedule clinics in 2023, though that list is nearly full as well. So I'm happy to come to Arizona, but I have nothing scheduled anywhere near there this year. Amber says, does it depend on the terrain to get them to gate better? Uphill, downhill make a difference. So I work with people all over the country and all over the world, and not everyone has a hill. Many people will write and say their horse gates uphill, but not when it's flat or downhill. So I personally... Again, my opinion is that I train horses to gait on the flat. And once they gait on the flat, they will gait uphill and downhill. Varied terrain does help. Snow, riding in, in deep snow or deep sand or water can help the gait. But again, I combine that with stop and praise. So Amber, I know you're new here, but please go watch a lot of my videos on stop and praise and head down uh, because that's going to help you. And I will share a link in the description on my video, my free video training course about, and you can watch it and there's a pacey horse section and you would start there to work with your pacey horse. So it does matter the terrain, but only temporarily. Your horse should gait on the flat, uphill, downhill, slightly rough terrain. If it's very rough, your horse might trot and I'm okay with allowing that, if that makes sense. Okay, let's see, do we have any other? We've had really good questions today. This is awesome, really good engagement. I hope the photos helped. If you missed the beginning, please go back and watch because I have photo examples of all the gates. Continue to ask questions and I will answer. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love the interaction on these videos. And again, I have a video on Friday coming up and we'll see if I maybe get another rant video in there or not. You guys got this. Have a great week.